let me share my screen guys <coughs> once you can see the screen please let me know okay i will send the pdf once again guys not an issue see this ppt all of you can you see this ppt i think it is not in, it's in good One ninety two, one sixty eight, one fifty two dot, one twenty. Okay. <coughs> so I told you why we do failover and what is the importance of having a failover. I gave you example that we always used to have two school dress, school uniform. We always have. multiple pair of shoes we always have you know uh, travel bags also multiple travel bags because if anything happens yes redundancy we cannot keep our network without firewall like suppose you are you are going out for some few days and your lock is broken you know though it is getting late you can't leave your house like that no anybody can rob it you need security you have to put all those gates properly lock them in fact you have to tell the neighbors also nowadays <coughs> so that neighbors are also cautious i remember one case when i you know somebody i gave uh, my key you know, my house keys to some relative and he said whenever you are coming to mumbai you go in my flat and stay there so my neighbor who is to you know don't know this guy So when he was opening the door, he immediately caught told him, and he said, "Boss, who are you? Why are you opening this door? I know they have gone out of, you know, out of the city. So I need, I don't want you to open this door. First, you identify yourself. So see, my neighbor started asking him questions, and finally, my neighbor called me. He confirmed that this guy is the right guy opening the door, and then when I confirmed him, yes, he is my relative. i know him let him open the door he allowed him to open the door so so it is necessary that you know if your firewall is not at present see many time it is acting like a gateway for all the lan users and for servers so if your gateway is down how your traffic is going to be uh, how how the traffic is going to come on the servers how the traffic is going out of the servers or out of the lan everything will go to a standstill so i don't want my network to be vulnerable i don't want my network to remain without any security device and that is why i'm doing redundancy that is why i'm doing failover i'm spending money on this failover so today we are already and i hope you understood what is failover why we do failover what is the advantage of having redundancy what is the uh, why it is also called high availability ha okay so now today we'll do this topic and i will i will show you practical of this topic failover and i will show you how to configure one of the firewall to remain as an active another firewall to become a standby unit 
active and standby unit I told you the importance of active and standby unit. So, today we will make ASA 1 my question is my task is I have two firewalls in this diagram just try to understand this diagram. I am having two firewalls in this diagram ASA 1 ASA 2 <coughs> this is my ASA 1. I told you what is the prerequisite of firewall. First we will do active standby, then we will go for active active. Okay. So, what is the prerequisite? The prerequisite is both the model, both the boxes should be of the same model. If it is 5520, then 5520. If it is 5515, 5515. If it is 5516, so, any model you choose for failover, the second box should be exactly same model. <coughs> Memory, license, interfaces, everything has to match. Definitely, if you are buying a same model, okay, then you will have all those stuff exactly. In fact, you have to check the IS version also, sub version of the IS. Sometimes it gives error. So, now what I did? I pulled down one cable. In fact, it is two cable that is coming from ASA 1 to ASA 2. S Ethernet 6 is connected to Ethernet 6 of ASA 2. Ethernet 7 is connected to Ethernet 7 of ASA 2 and both the boxes are carrying a license to do failover that is also important. Secondly, if you see there is a LAN switch <coughs> behind ASA 1 that is called R 9 and just rename it as I do not know it is not getting. Okay. So, R 9 is the switch which is connecting R 3 that is LAN PC. Then one more switch is one more switch I have kept it for demilitarized zone. So, in ASA 1 you see E 0 is going to act as outside, E 1 is going to act as a inside, E 2 is going to act as a DMZ. Because if you do not understand the diagram and if I write down the commands you would not understand. So, it is better you first understand the diagram got it guys. So, this is my inside which is going to the common switch. Now, this switch is also having a connection to this from inside that is E 1. So, here also E 1 is connected to switch this one here also it is E 1. So, inside both the inside connection is intact. One is one interface is 10.1, the second one is 10.2. Because see, both are connecting to a common centralized device that is switch. So, if you have same IP address on both the interfaces, it will conflict. You cannot have save same IP address on Ethernet 1 of ASA 1 and Ethernet 1 on ASA 2. That is why you see I kept it 10.1 and 10.2. The when I when I talk about demilitarized zone, you see 10.1.1.1 and 10.1.1.2. Again, both these devices are also connected to same common switch called R10. Okay. <coughs> See, it becomes important for the LAN users and for servers to, to send the traffic without any glitch or without any problem. Their connectivity always should remain up and that is also that is only possible due to redundancy. See, for example, I gave one file for processing some contract file in one of the department government department. Now, when it comes to 
government department with due respect if the person the person we whom i am giving this file if he is absent then the work is you know work is held up like why because he is the only person who is going to attend my file so if he is not well if he is on leave then your job is stuck but when it comes to private companies when it comes to privatization if this guy is not present somebody else will look after your file and your job will be done in a particular stipulated time in a particular time they have given you some deadline come after 4 days when you go there your file is ready privatization government sector so this is the way okay the person who is gone for leave he will come after leave 15 days or 30 days then only your file will get processed i am not telling against government but there are cases where some people they don't want to do their job properly they are lazy okay so when it comes to a client client satisfaction is important so people will not say you that sentence that sorry boss you come after 15 days or one month because the person whom you gave the file is absent or is on leave you have to run the show you have to manage the show you have to tell him boss good you have come after four days this is your job done because see if you go on telling people that no just because he is on leave your job was stuck sorry when he come back we will tell him to do it faster all these are excuses if i am paying you for some stuff i should get it on time if you are giving me excuses i am not going to listen that so if asa 1 goes down it is the duty of asa 2 because asa 1 was acting as a primary unit active unit he was serving it so when when he goes and tell r3 boss sorry i am dead now or i am not working fine so you have to wait or today there will be no work you can't send any traffic to internet because your i am down so internet is all down no that is why you brought asa 2 so r3 will never come to know that earlier my traffic was served by asa 1 now my traffic is served by asa 2 <coughs> why he wants to know that he he should get connectivity that's all and he is getting connectivity if one of the box fails another box is taking the responsibility that is fail over r3 will not go there and start the another box <coughs> i remember in those days when we used to go to villages there were no power villages were powerless so what we used to do no we used to put that lantern two three lanterns were there in the house <coughs> we used to put them on the wall there was a hook type being you know attached on the wall and that hook u type hook we used to keep that lanterns and we used to you know sit in that burning light or that lantern and then we used to eat also and sleep also with that lantern on it is nothing but a small fire coming inside the glass lantern you have seen lanterns but later on when i when i was you know when i grew up like you know i was a little bit uh you know understand things and i started going villages in vacation i was very happy to see there was a power in my village so like you know uh we used to have bulbs that time no tube lights you know but at least it was better than lantern because lanterns light is too you know it was almost dark how many lanterns you are going to put man so i used to be very happy <coughs> but later on i was you know sad also because what happened no and one more thing i got the advantage of having a ceiling fan also that time no ceiling fan nothing if you are feeling hot or something like that you have to just come out of the house and sleep in open now why i am telling you this example that when when there was power 
and this power was not so good it was pathetic so out of you know whole week only 3 days the power is up rest of the days the power is gone <laughs> some of the other reasons so again back to pavilion so any time if i am eating my food in the you know i am taking my dinner the bulb is on and suddenly the bulb goes away you know light power is gone now if the power is gone what happened now then again i have to rush to the place where i have kept the lanterns then i have to put a on a fire in that lantern matchstick i have to find out the matchstick in the dark so we used to carry some torch lights also that time easily finding then finally what happened after one hour or two or again the power come so lantern has to go off because we used to use kerosene for that so always you see in the night time also we used to do the switch overs this is called switch over and that is manually if power is not there we have to put the lanterns on or candles and then we used to have candle light dinner but later on again after few years when i started visiting one of my childhood friend in village he opened a medical store so i was very happy and i just met him in the bazaar area and said oh god you opened a medical store he said yes so i said i'm coming from mumbai and always uh, want to relax in native place relaxing so can i sit with you in this medical store he said welcome man come inside so when i went there you know our ceiling fan is running and i'm feeling so good are wow nowadays you know this medical store carries a power also but later on after 4 5 hours like sitting there after 4 5 years i told him that i'm leaving but before leaving i just asked him nowadays the power is very good na man last 4 5 hours i'm sitting in your medical store and i never saw a power is going off he said boss when you were sitting here there were five times that power went off after every uh, one hour the power gone for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes so i said how it is possible my fan was your fan was running lights were also there he said i am using generator is using what generator so i remember that generator days also we used to start that manually but then this was auto auto means as soon as the light goes off generator will immediately start keep your fan moving lights also on ha you can run ac is and all so he said boss when you were sitting there was 5 to 10 times the wire the power went off but then there is an auto switch over auto switch over means once the power goes off immediately the generator will start and start giving power this is the beauty of automatic so the whole story whole example tells you what that in my case also in ac case also in firewall case also if ac one goes down it will take some time some delay like it is 15 second by default and ac2 will come up without r3 knowing that there is some problem like i was sitting in medical store for 5 hours doing some time pass and i noticed there was no power cut but actually power cut was there i couldn't find out because the fan never stopped when power was there he took the power from the main electricity board and when power went off he took the power from generator but ultimately everything was moving smoothly so here also when you go in outskirts in city also where there is no commercialization commercial factories offices there there is no power cut even people are utilizing like this is a summer season now continuous air condition fans refrigerators everything is working and the consumption of energy or consumption of electricity is too high in march april may 3 months quarterly so asa will design asa1 and asa2 for active standby the topic and we'll see r3 will never come to know that there is disconnection 
of ASA 1 and ASA 2 took place or took the charge because he is going to act as a standby. So, if I am not present somebody has to take my charge somebody cannot give the excuse no he is not there so work will not be done. Clear? I hope you have gone through the topology, you have seen the topology and in when, when you saw the topology you see ASA 1 is having 3 in 5 interface, one is going for outside, second is going for inside, third is going for demilitarized zone, fourth is going for as a failover link and the fifth one is stateful failover. Now, there is a difference between a normal failover and stateful failover. But first you try to understand why there is a connection between ASA 1 and ASA 2. I gave you an example of office boy. I was having only one office boy in my company. I hired another office boy. So, now redundancy is there and oh, both these office boys are carrying a mobile phone and they communicate with each other. They sync with each other. They coordinate with each other. They try to find out the status. So, whenever ASA 1 or whenever one office boy is not turning up to office, the second one immediately joins and immediately take over the position of the active. So, whenever I, we are in office, we never felt that you know somebody is not there. We, we get all our water bottles, we get tea, we get coffee, everything properly by these guys. But Sometime we notice that both are not there at the same time. One is there, second one is on leave for some reason, not well, family not well or official leave or week off. Second guy is already there to serve him. Okay? So, today we are going to configure ASA 1 to become active in the failover group or you can say in failover, we are doing a topic called active standby where I want ASA 1 to be active and ASA 2 should remain as a standby guy. Okay. So, I will say start my uh, if you do not understand you can ask me guys. Huh? So, we will start this ASA 1 and then we will start this ASA 2 also. For some reason I think it is going for R 5. Let us see what is the uh, three two seven eight zero. I told you whenever there is some configuration early pre configuration, you go to config mode then say clear configure all. Here also you go to config mode and say clear configure all. Then you go to ASA 1, set the host name ASA 1. Host name say ASA 2. Now, you do not have to touch ASA 2, why? Because ASA 2 is going to become what? Standby. So, I am not going to configure anything on ASA 2, but yes, I am going to configure my ASA 1 to act as an active firewall.
Sometimes happens like you know image is misbehaving in Eve, otherwise if NG is very good. So, if your image is not good or corrupt then it will not show you the output. Let us first check the interfaces. Now, you can see all the interfaces, but we need to see what is the failover active standby. We can do active standby, no problem.
So, what I will do? I will just connect this E 0 or G 0 by 0. G 1 G 2 G 3 and G 4. G 3 goes to G 3, G 4 goes to G 4. And definitely G 1 goes here. G 0 G no yes G 2 ok. So, G 0 G 0 by 2 0 by 1 0 by 0 0 by 2. Now, how I am going to configure this? See this. I will go here for, for ASA 1 only. Config T interface G 0 by 0, IP address 20.11.1255.255.0, and I will make standby IP address as. <coughs> 20.11.2 no shut name if outside interface g0 by 1 ip address 192 168 10.1 255.255.255.0 and i will also give the standby ip address say name if standby IP address <coughs> when you give zero this thing security level should be 50. On G 0 by 3 you have to do no shut on G 0 by 4 you have to do no shut do not configure any IP address. So, this is outside inside DMZ for outside default security level for inside default security level. Now, we will start this. So, this is my basic configuration on firewall. <coughs> on ASA 2 you have to do interface G 0 by 3 no shut and G 0 by 4 also no shut and here I have to say fail over LAN unit primary 
fail over interface f o and g 0 by 3 f o means fail over interface the name it is just the name and which interface fail over interface i p i p what is the i p any i p you can give so i gave 10 dot 2 dot 2 dot 1 what is the standby i p 10 dot 2 dot 2 dot 2 and then I give what fail over first we will do this So, when I say show interface IP brief, so route, route outside 0 0, next stop is 5, my R 1 is going to act as a 5. Twenty dot one dot one dot one. So, interface IP brief. <coughs> now, I will use what failover command. I told you what is the command failover unit, failover LAN unit primary. This is the command failover interface FO G0 by 3. failover LAN interface FO G 0 by 3. So, failover LAN unit primary, failover LAN interface FO, FO is just a name of this interface. So, when I said okay, this interface is going to be used as a failover interface, then all the configuration from this interface is gone, if you have pre configured. So, I have not done any configuration and then I have to set the IP address for this interface and I have decided that I am going to use 2.2.1.255.255.255.0 and standby will be 10.2.2.2 and then last but not least I have to say fail one. Three two seven seven four. Leave the host name. You can use the same failover command. So, I go here on the notepad paste it and then I say last, but this will be now my secondary unit. So, the terms are primary and secondary. Now, when I gave this command, 
they are they are trying to communicate with each with each other and you see they did the communication and then this fellow gave him all the configuration you want to see see as it to all the configuration is received as a one so when i say show fail over i get to see that i am on and i am going to act as a primary unit that is active and the other guy other guy means the next firewall is going to act as a standby unit both as and the mate version is 9.9 bracket 2 which interface is being used for failover g0 by 3 the communication is taking place on this interface you can see all the other interface are being monitored and they are normal unit pole frequency is 1 second that means every 1 second and the whole time is 15 seconds what is this every 1 second asa1 is talking to asa2 and they are exchanging hellos actually asa2 talks to asa1 and confirms that whether he is active or not so the time is 1 second but after a whole time of 15 second like i am you know i am asking hello all of you are you there adnan delin mohammad mujahid but i am not getting any response from you know all these four people so i will wait one second i will say hello hello and then i will wait for 15 second and after 15 second also i have not hear from you that means i will consider you guys are down or you guys are dead down see one is like you know your box get reboots or there is some physical issues okay so you see when i am telling who is there are you guys are there or not so mujahid is telling yes i am there okay so if you are there then it's okay so communication has to be there between this two boxes and the pole time is 1 second and 15 second now you must be wondering what is this 5 second and 25 second so initially what happens no that the interface which is communicating with another firewall is g0 by 3 which is called at hard bit interface or hard bit cable or you can say fail over interface again fail over interface also need one private ip address or any ip address you can give from anywhere but it needs an ip address now in worst case suppose my fail over interface is not working there is a chance that then i will start sending hello packets or this hello on monitored interfaces also like i'm talking about g0 g1 and g2 and there my hello time is 5 second and the whole time is 25 seconds so at present all my interface are being monitored but remember all the other interfaces are not fail over interface they are data interface data traffic is moving so that is why Cisco said, "Okay, you take one interface dedicatedly to communicate with them." I have seen some people they keep their commercial phones for only official work, like they are communicating with the clients, they are communicating with the office people, and there is one more separate phone only for communicating with family, friends. Okay. so they carry two phones so what is the advantage you are keeping your private number separate from official number official number your company is paying for your official number and company don't want you to misuse 
I remember those days when every call was charged. It was not unlimited. It was limited. So, if I am using my official phone, mobile phone for calling my friends and talking to my family every time, then it is going to raise, you know, company is going to raise an issue. What is this man? We have given you this phone and we are paying your bills only for official purpose, not for your personal use. So, that time I remember people used to separate official phone with private phone because for private they can talk to anyone on that private phone and they can pay their own bill. But in case if you are using official phone you won't believe we used to get an official phone and from there we used to give calls to other states. So, that is called STD calls long distance. And then we used to also do international calls with the clients, ISD. So, that particular phone or gadget is allowing you to go for interstate calls, local call, interstate call and international calls also. And who is going to bear those charges? Definitely company is going to bear that, those charges because it is for official purpose. You are bringing some business, you are talking to client. I am talking about 10 years back, 12 years back when data and calling was not that unlimited kind of thing. There were limitation on calls, there were limitation on you know, data was not there at all, hotspots and all those days except calling, incoming call, outgoing call that is all. If you are getting a call on that mobile phone that was also charged. So, the communication point between ASA 1 and ASA 2 is G 0 by 3. This interface is continuously receiving some or the other mon, you know, messages. And this is nothing but hello packets. 3,883 packets, 4,659 packets on the failover interface. So, what is the command to see the failover? The command to see failover is show failover, where you can see failover is there or not on this unit is being called as what primary and he is active, the other guy is standby, other guy. So, let us go and see other guy or other box or firewall, second firewall which is also on and but he is playing the role of secondary or standby. So, now if anything happens like you know ok let us send the traffic of switch R 7. So, we do say telnet to 1.1.2, but telnet is not going to work until and unless we configure a policy. So, we co configure a policy out dash in permit TCP anyone to come on host 10.1.1.2 for telnet for HTTP and for HTTPS. And then we have access list out dash in permit ICMP any to host 10.1.1.2 show run access list. So, when I say access ok, now I say access group out dash in in interface outside. So, I say WR. So, when I say show access list you can see I have created an access list on active unit. Now, when I go here and say show access list you will see ASA 1 who is active unit immediately gave this access list to this guy ASA 2. That means, if you are doing any configuration you have to do only on ASA 1 because he is playing the role of active unit 
and ASA 2 is going to act as a standby unit. Suppose in by chance I did some mistake and I am configuring one access list here with permit statement and I said I want IP or I want UDP connection from any to say host 10.1.1.2 equal to say 53 DNS. So, when I write a statement or do any kind of configuration on standby unit, he will immediately give me a warning configuration replication is not performed from standby unit to it is the right of only the active unit to transfer the information to a standby unit. You cannot configure or you are not supposed to configure anything on secondary unit that is the standby unit otherwise he will give you a warning and say boss I am not going to replicate this information to active unit because that is the job of primary unit or active unit it is not my job. So, please do not create any access list here instead of that you do one thing you go and create the access list here this fellow will accept it. See here I am not getting any warning. You see I configure this and I got the output. clear clear what I am trying to tell you. Now, I will do what R 7 telnet server 1. So, IP INT brief Okay. I cannot access 10.1.1.2 because I have already kept this IP address for the standby unit. See. So, I will go on R7 and say boss I want to go to 10, but I have to change the policy also because I mentioned that 2. So, I will first take this policy and correct it and make it 10, then I will take this make it 10, then I will correct this and make it 10, this is the IP address of server. I will make this statement and make it 10. So, when I say show run access list you will get to see 2 is also there and 10 is also there, but anyway we want 10. So, now when I try to tell it from outside the connection is served by active unit you can see connection is served by active unit. But when I go to ASA and say show connection detail he says sorry boss do not come here I am a standby unit. So, if I go to any standby like I, am, I if I can see two office boy and if I go in a duty period of first office boy and ask something to him he will immediately offer, but if I go to the second one he says sorry boss I am standby I am not on duty now. You have to ask everything to active unit he is going to provide you do not come and ask me anything or do not give me any job I am acting as a standby unit. So, when R 7 try to do telnet on server it is the job or it is the duty of active unit to serve him or allow him with the help of policy though ASA 2 is also the second firewall is also carrying the policy, but he will never serve him.
clear guys so what i will do i will write down the configuration here also if you see if i write there it is saved here also and then i will start sending a ping packet to the server with minus t or repeat repeat 10000 it should work because sorry i am doing it on 2 again i should do it on 10 it's not 10112 i should do it on 10 and then i switch off this asa you see i got one drop because my asa is down let's see this okay see when asa one down he he was not communicating with this guy so after a delay of 15 second you can see this is the drop i got it and now who is serving the traffic definitely asa 2 and who has become active now asa 2 so you must be thinking that you know asa1 carries an ip address of 192.168.10.1 or 10.1.1 or 20.1.1 how come asa2 took that ip because see r7 knows only about a guy called 21110 that's all like for example i know a term from childhood when you know i started going to school and started the topic history topic history class they started teaching me the history what happened in this country who came how many wars that took place and there was one more topic where we were being taught about politics or constitution or the rights history and civics was that the combo so history is talking about all those kings emperors moguls everybody and civics are talking something about politics and other things so teacher is to explain us that there is a post in a country called prime minister in us and all they have president here we have prime minister who is the head who is ruling in the country taking decisions talking to other inter other international countries but teacher never told us the name of any of the prime minister the teacher explained me about all about the prime minister rights how the prime minister is elected no doubt there was some information that who was our first prime minister in india who was the second third and fourth but now when i ask my son the new generation they will say what we have to do with that first or second so it's just a history now and when i ask them currently who is the prime minister general knowledge then they will say okay our current prime minister is so and so and he is ruling the country so currently if you see in the fail over who is active asa2 Be 5 10 minutes before this conversation or example asa1 was acting as active unit so why i gave you the example of prime minister the prime minister word is fixed from 1947 or whenever the constitution was made you must all be aware those who are from india the term is same but there are people who are coming and going <laughs> but the word is same the bungalow is same the term is same so when i am telling that asa1 is active and asa2 is stand standby and when i shouted who is active who raised the hand asa1 raised the hand and said okay i am active now i am going to serve the traffic 
but now what happened asa 1 is down and again i am shouting who is going to serve the traffic who is active so as say 2 is telling now i am active i am active so if you see my configuration on asa try to understand the logic i am making uh, when i configured this firewall i said whoever act as an active unit will carry this ip address i never said i never said that this you know i said whoever act as an active unit so that means now at present mr x is prime minister and he is staying in that bungalow which belongs to prime minister enjoying the perks benefits everything after 5 years 10 years or 20 years i don't know who is going to be the next prime minister and he is also going to be enjoying the same perks same bungalow same everything so people come and go but the bungalow is there only and the word prime minister is also same intact so when i'm telling that 192.168.10.1 belongs to active unit 192.168.10.2 belongs to standby unit not active so when i said who is active asa2 is telling boss i am active so what is your ip he is telling 192.168.10.1 10 minutes before this example when i said who is active asa1 said i am active and i said okay what is your ip address he said 192.168.10.1 10.1.1 one for demilitarized zone and 20.1.1.1 for outside this is my ip address because i am active and then i asked him who is standby he said boss my neighbor asa2 he is going to act as a standby unit can you please tell me what is his ip address he said definitely dot two in all the network it is dot two how you know because see my administrator configured asa1 and he said boss this is your ip address this is his ip address so my ip address is 1 and his ip address is 2 so when i am asking asa2 now after failover he is telling boss i am active and i belongs to dot 1 so there is no confusion now when i am telling the word cashier in a bank it is written there on the placard or in on this there is a glass and that it is written cashier have you seen there is a word written there mr x cashier so what will happen if i write down the word mr vijay cashier so what will happen if mr vijay is not coming that particular day in bank i won't get cash why because i clearly said mr vijay is the cashier and where is vijay at home so i am not going to get the money that is why you see bank always put what the term cashier so what is the meaning of that anybody who sit on this counter is cashier so who sits there mr vijay okay what about mr vijay he is not there so who is sitting there mrs shital is sitting there she is also cashier <laughs> cashier table is same the term is also same money is also there inside the drawer but you the people are changing so when i talk about active standby please try to understand there is no confusion of ip addressing asa1 also knows about the ip address asa2 knows about the ip address and both of them knows about primary and secondary so when it comes to failover it is odd. i told you example of medical store when I am sitting there, my fan is continuously moving, but then he said later on, power went off for 10 times, but you never, you know, you never felt that. Why? Because fan was continuously moving. And why continuously moving? When power went off, my generator started. When power came back, my generator stopped and power started and vice versa. It continuously switch over. <laughs> So now what happened when I start this first firewall? See there is a word written here is what primary failed. So being a secondary unit I am active. So what happened when I start this? So when I start this, 
now what happened asa2 still remains the primary like for example if somebody comes in a place of somebody's behalf and if that person return back he is not going to take over that position that is called preemption or preempt so in active standby you don't have a term called preempt you can't configure preempt why because if you configure preempt means you are telling that boss asa2 now you have become active because asa1 was not there but later on when he come back you have to leave the position of your active and become standby automatically that is not there the preemption key is not there so what happens when asa1 come back he becomes standby unit and not primary he is telling okay continue man asa2 you continue though i have come back though i have come back from leave i am standby only and you are going to act as an active so what happened when this fellow sends a ping packet asa2 only serves it and asa1 has become now active uh, standby unit so see he is not serving not serving because he became what standby and asa2 has become now active but now you are telling me no no you know i want it forcefully this fellow should become active see you don't have to force because both the boxes are of same caliber both the boxes carries the same processors interfaces version ios version so let asa2 handle the situation and let him become active unit but then you are telling me you no know, i want once again the same position to be given to asa1 so i forcefully say okay come on you become active now so when you become active this fellow became standby auto with the command automatically and now you see it is this guy who is serving the traffic why because he has become he has become the primary unit okay clear guys any question regarding active and standby either you switch off the whole box or one of the interfaces go bad there will be some some kind of test taking place for finding it out that whether this asa is down or not without confirmation failover won't take place and this confirmation process takes 15 seconds with 5 second 5 second to find out whether it is physically down or not another 5 second he is taking for finding it out hello packets okay and the third 5 second he is finding it out the arc so there are certain things okay there is a sequence i will tell you tomorrow 5 five, five second test like i you know always remember when somebody dies either heart attack or something like that old age so when the doctor comes and find out or trying to find out what happened to this person what he will do he will you know he will try to find out the nerve whether nerve or you know he is breathing or not first test finding out the nerve putting a you know holding his wrist and checking whether nerve is there or not is getting some beats or not second test he will check near the nose he will go and check whether he is breathing or not and the third test he might see his eyes when a person dies some changes occurs in his eyes he will put some torch light in his eyes and he try to find out that means this is the test that is carried out by the doctors to declare that this person is no more he cannot just go and see and say he died in fact i remember you know my neighbor uh, one of the lady died because of old age she was 85 or 90 years old you know you can literally <coughs> being you know kids like I, we can also see 
she died. Now, we can easily find out that she has already died early morning somewhere or in the night, I do not know. So, now we were just gossiping like you know we were all <coughs> people are gathered and looking at the body and you know said. So, suddenly doctor came to verify. So, we were laughing. So, you know, some, some uncle shouted at us, you know, why you are laughing? It's a serious situation, somebody died and you are laughing. So, you know, we just, you know, we just saw the doctor doing all those tests. So, we were laughing that even being a kid, you know, we are also, we are just kids, we are not doctors. We can easily tell that this person had died. But then why this doctor is doing all these three, four tests, holding the hand, putting stethoscope on the chest, looking at the eyes, because after when we grew, when we grew, we found out it is necessary to declare a person dead without confirmation, you cannot just say dead or he is no more. So, same fundamental is being used that whenever there is a, when the box goes down, I try to find out like, I try to find out with some of the tests. So, both the firewall do some of the tests in this three consecutive five seconds and that is why there is a fix default time of 15 seconds to declare that the first unit has gone bad and the second unit is going to take the position of active unit. So, there will be some physical tests, arc tests. That is why I told you, you know, this is the timer, default timer, 15 seconds. This is the pole time. And I showed you how many drops were there. Hardly 6, 7 drops are there. It is not like that, that you know, if one person has not turn up to uh, as a cashier not turn up that the bank manager will make another person sit after 2-3 hours. People will kill the manager if, you know, if they do not get money. People will fight. I remember one of the bank was not able to give cash for some reasons. You know, there was a flood and all the water came inside the bank and then so, people were told that at least for two days you won't get cash, bank is closed. But later on people started fighting, screaming, they wanted cash, the, those days ATMs were not there. Now we can get it from ATMs, those days only you can get your cash only from your own branch, not even from another branch. You have to go to your own branch, show them the passbook, give them the check and they will give you money after one hour that is the queue. Now, you guys are very lucky man, you, you are living in a age where everything is so instant. If you are not carrying money, I remember once I forgot my purse, I have to beg from someone money, how can I travel? I, I borrowed it from one of the guy and he was looking at me like why he is asking money is dress up so well and he is asking money, but then later he understood what is the reason. I forgot my purse and I just went and sat into the bus and conductor is asking him give me money for ticket and I do not have money. Embarrassing situation and now what happens? If you do not have money you say what G pay. You just take out your mobile and scan it, that is all. Many days people carry only 10 rupees, 20 rupees, sometimes the purse is empty also and they can go anywhere at the, you know, anywhere, everywhere 99 percent people are accepting that barcodes, GPA, direct online transfer. Clear guys, have you any question? Physically we use G 0 by 3, can you see? How you how how you know that it is we are using that port? We have to declare that I am going to use this interface as a failure interface. So I declared it in the failure command. Good question. So physically, which port we use for this active standby? When you are bringing a box, 
you see lot of interfaces are there no so you take any one of the interface any interface will work as a failover man yes there were days when there was a dedicated failover interface those days are gone those boxes are now outdated now we have eight interfaces so you can take any of these eight interface and give him the role of failover it is not mandatory or compulsory that you should use three only you can use four you can use five you can use six you can use seven you can use eight any interface can become a failover interface it is not mandatory and we call and there is a word called lbf now we use the word lbf lbf means what lan based failover you are not restricted to a particular interface if 3 goes bad you can go for 4 if 4 goes bad you can go for 5 and so on it is your choice in real environment also real time environment it is your choice but i try to use some standard some you know thumb rule so if i am using some thumb rule i am taking g0 by 0 as outside so 99% people always consider 0 by 0 as outside and the term word outside now 0 by 1 they always treat it as inside 0 by 2 they may they'll go for demilitarized zone like that again it is your choice you can do anything best practice i'm not telling it is compulsory uh, this is all because if, la, you know some years back there was boxes with a dedicated failover interface if if that interface goes bad then what how you going to manage the failover you have to throw the whole box and there was a special cable modified rs232 cable for failover modified rs232 standard cable for doing failover and that also the length of the cable was 3 and 1/2 meter now now there is no limitation man if you are using lbf that is lan based failover you can go up to 100 meters you know the you know the you know if you use any utp cable or stp cable and if you are using extension you can go for 200 meters also no restriction on you can keep one firewall in one rack in one building you can keep another firewall in another building for failover there is no restriction of keeping them at in the same rack you can put both of them anywhere and they can still act as an active and standby unit because cable length is increased now earlier the modified rs232 cable is can you can extend up to only 3 meters and plus a special cable price also very high interface cost they stopped it see cisco ha- cisco has to capture the ma- market you know he can't di- keep things difficult people will not buy he has to give us some flexibility clear so we finish stand active standby failover i hope all your queries are answered i hope you enjoyed the session guys so tomorrow we'll meet at 5 okay and we'll go for stateful failover i i will explain you what is the meaning of stateful failover i will show you active active failover also the topic is not ended okay thank you guys take care bye